Welcome to this podcast brought to you by the Chapel of Corpus Christi College. I'm grateful to the organ scholars, chapel wardens and choir for all the hard work they have put into creating this series of podcasts over the course of the Trinity term. Corpuscles are dispersed all over the globe and we cannot gather together as a community. But although we are dispersed, we are working hard at not being remote. The College Chapel is authentic to its foundation as a place of Christian worship and is also authentic to itself as a place of welcome, participation and hospitality to everyone. We hope that these podcasts will provide you with some spiritual resources, whatever your faith or none, as we near the end of term. This Sunday is Trinity Sunday a bit of an outlier in the Christian calendar because it celebrates a doctrine about God or an idea about God, if you will, rather than what is more normal, an event in the life of Christ, such as Christmas celebrates his birth and Easter his resurrection. Another example is Corpus Christi Day, which we will celebrate this coming Thursday. Our college was named for that feast day by our founder, Bishop Fox, but more of that later in the week. I'm grateful to the Reverend Barney Barron for accepting the invitation to preach for us on this day. Barney and his wife Sarah are both Baptist ministers and work together as pioneer ministers with the Baptist Union of Great Britain, ministering in Cornwall. They also have the distinction of being Corpus parents and we're very grateful to them for that too. When these plans were made, like all the well-laid plans made before COVID-19, we had hoped to welcome them to the college. So I am grateful that Barney can at least be with us virtually as we near the end of term. It is well known amongst us religious professionals that Trinity Sunday can be a challenging preaching invitation. So I am grateful to Barney for accepting our invitation. But at its heart, the Trinity is about love. That at the heart of God is the loving relationship of the three persons, Father, Son, and and Holy Spirit, in mutual love, accord, and self-giving. We human beings are made in that image of God. We are made for love, and a love that inclines to justice a message we need more than ever, as the the depth of systemic racial injustice, something that BAME people know very well already, is being laid out so clearly for those of us who are not. Let us pray. Trinity of love, maker of humanity in your image, give us the grace to see your image in us and in each other and to know how great our need is for one another and for you. Hear this prayer for your love's sake. Amen. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. in all dimensions. We can reside in chapels derived from rent, be a presence among Greek columns, a pulpit's voice, a friend, a pride of sermonising old middle-aged or young. All clothing fits, boots, academic gown, a scuba suit, yak fur, breech clout, high hat. Whatever helps to plough, design a town, make a fence or barn, write poems or swim a bat. Like water, you can't hold him in your hand. Make an echo and he's the voice itself. He's double bass or flute the entire band. The objet d'art, the bracket and the shell. Go on, twist and turn, shade your eyes. God's all you take for granted or buy.
that surprise. Good morning. My name's Barney Barron. I'm a pioneer minister with the Baptist Union of Great Britain, and I'm currently in Lou in Cornwall, where I've been for two years. Today we look at Matthew 28, 16 to 20, uh, often referred to as the Great Commission. In this final meeting of Jesus and his followers, we see the gathering together, the whole gospel and life of Jesus into a f final few lines. It's a compact ending, but there's so much in these few lines that it's worth reading through slowly and considering every part. It's no surprise that Jesus calls the disciples to the mountain. Lots happen in Matthew's Gospel on a mountain, the temptations, the Sermon on the Mount, the Transfiguration, the final discourse on the Mount of Olives, and now this parting scene where Jesus commissions his disciples. There they saw him and worshipped him, though some doubted. There is room for our humanity, for hesitation, for doubt. There is room for questioning and uncertainty. This passage isn't clear about what the doubting were, were referred to. Were they doubting it was really Jesus? Were they doubting as good Jewish monotheists whether they should be worshipping Jesus at all? It's unclear, but what is clear is some doubted, but they worshipped him. I don't know about you, but I find some comfort in that. With all the, that the disciples had witnessed with their own eyes and ears, having lived in close proximity to Jesus and ministered alongside him, there was still doubt, and yet Jesus was commissioning these eleven with a most awesome task and placing into their hands the responsibility to take the movement and mission of God to all nations. Jesus holds all authority in heaven and earth. With that authority he commissions these eleven. Though some are doubtful, confused and probably quite scared, he commissions them to carry on God's restoration plan for the world. For some followers of Jesus in our modern times, Evangelism has become an uncomfortable word. I confess at times, even as someone ordained as an evangelist within the Baptist Union, it has at times sat uneasily with me. However, it's hard to read this passage and deny the call as those sent out into the world to make disciples, baptising and teaching all nations. I guess evangelism has often got a bad reputation because at times... It's been about conversion at all costs and sometimes by force. A conversion that is divorced from discipleship. A conversion that is tied up in nationalism, pride and arrogance. A non-consensual evangelism that doesn't sound like good news and is not a lover and respecter of people. 
this kind of evangelism is in fact the very antithesis of what Jesus taught and who he is. The church was never meant to be an institution which held power, wealth and political influence. It was never meant to be a static organisation that called people to come to us as we have all the answers. The church at its best was uh, and is meant to be a humble group of followers who sometimes doubt and sometimes get it wrong. However, despite our vulnerability, we're sent to go, to listen, to come alongside, to love, to worship, and in our frailty, to be good news to the people we meet along the way. Knowing on this journey uh, through life, whatever we face, in joy and in plenty, in hardships and sickness, and even in a global pandemic, Jesus is present with us by his Holy Spirit to love us, to lead us, to empower us, and when we fall, to pick us up and cheer us on. So go, and as the quote, often attributed to Francis Assisi says, preach the gospel at all times, if necessary, use words. We pray for the Black Lives Matter movement at the moment. We pray for safety for those in protests in London and particularly across the United States. We pray for change to come and for equality in our society and across the globe, particularly in America right now. We also pray for acknowledgement and change within our own community. We pray for the COVID-19 situation, for those caring for others on the front line of the NHS and in other care services. We pray for wisdom for the government as they continue to ease the lockdown. And we pray for peace for those still stuck indoors after such a long time. Beloved Trinity, God in relationship, sometimes when we stretch our hands out to you and to each other, they are trembling. We are scared. We have been hurt in the past by betrayals of our trust and we know at times we will get hurt again because we are only human and we let each other down. Come Holy Spirit, give us the power to take risks, to open up our hearts to you and to each other, to stretch our hands to heaven and open them to friends, and even if others hurt them. We know that they hurt your hands too. Hold our hearts in yours and we know that in there, the safe space inside you, they will always have a home and we can never die. Give us pardon. Give us peace, wash us clean. Help us serve you, freed from our worries and freed from our guilt, by Jesus our Lord. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous and for all for thy tender love's sake. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong, defend you on every side, and lead you into all peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank <laughs> you.